Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Tom, Dr. Tom. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you here. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Dawn. This is great. You are going to educate the heck out of me today because I'm so oblivious to a lot of the things that your clinic offers. So you deal in Eastern Asian medicine, integrative health. What is that? Is that functional medicine? And what I, is so, it? you know, there's a lot of buzzwords that get thrown around, yeah. right? And uh, even when we were opening this clinic, I, I started to use the word wellness, but that's become so you know, like it doesn't mean anything anymore. And it can mean anything from like, you know, Hey, you got a mud wrap to a colonic to, you know, something yeah, else. And, and, seriously. and I, when, when we talk about integrative, I think that word really revolves around being able to pair services together and looking at a complete system of, of, of way somebody's taking care of themselves. So all of those tools, whether they're Eastern, Western, uh, whether they're modern, traditional, mm -hmm. uh, and how they play together in, in somebody's whole picture of health. Uh, functional medicine is a little bit more, uh, and, and in its roots actually has some roots in East Asian medicine, which is that you know we're going to look back as close to the source of the problem and how do we fix that, right? So if something is not doing what it's supposed to be doing in the body, uh, we can take a drug that'll like regulate that. But if it's a gland, how do we get that gland to stimulate and do what it's supposed to do again? You know, that that is true functional medicine. How far back? And and I'll add a caveat to that as well. Functional medicine also means, you know, your lab work might be, you know, within normal ranges, but you still feel like crap. Mm -hmm. Well, it may be because your hormone range is so wide that, you know, when you were 18, you were up here and now you're, you know, 30, 40, and you're half of what you used to have, but you're right. still smack dab in the middle of the range, but you don't feel right. And that's when functional medicine practitioners come in. And this isn't my hat, but this is the ones I refer to will do this. Let's look at all this lab work. Okay, you're in normal limits, but what were you before? You know, mm -hmm. and how do we get you functioning more at that level? So <clears throat> Eastern medicine does the same thing. Our idea is look at the system as a whole and try to get the system as a whole functioning the way it should, right? So it's not just, you said this thing, we're gonna go here, you had this symptom and this is how we treat that. It's a whole picture. So when you come into our clinic, especially for acupuncture, you're gonna answer a lot of questions. You might be saying, hey, I'm not sleeping, but okay, well, how's your bowel movements? When was your last period? Yeah, you know, these kind of things all put uh, a picture of who Dawn is as a whole person. Okay. Not just this hurts or that's not right, or I don't like this, or, hey, I've been kind of blue lately, it, but who are you as a whole person? How do those all play together? And the idea is if we work on you as a whole being, the whole being improves and we have the energy and ability to repair ourselves. So do people come to you um, when they are just like sick of modern medicine and they're like, you know what, yeah. I have been to every doctor <laughs> and nothing. Is that when you're getting people? When, when I started out, uh, you know, and I think it also depends on where you are in the country. Um, mm -hmm. when I started out, it was a lot of like last ditch effort, you know, like I've tried everything else. No one can tell me what's wrong or they know what it is. And no matter what the intervention is, it hasn't helped. Uh, and acupuncture can actually, you know, pull out some big wins there, but really acupuncture in its best use, at least in my head is preventative is maintenance, right? So we want to have some kind of, if you feel great all the time, yeah, maybe come in once a month, once every couple of months and just get a tune up, uh, you know, and at the first sign of illness, at the first sign of something going wrong, that's when you should be coming to us. You know, yes, we'll we'll gladly work hard and put you back together, but I'd rather have you in that position where it's like, hey, something doesn't feel right. I'm here now. Here's everything. Let's take care of it. Okay. So going back, just talk to me like I'm a first grader. You got Why it. would somebody get acu acupuncture to begin with? Okay. How do they know I if they need it? <laughs> so it, it's it, it's if we're talking from a Western perspective, the the World Health Organization recognizes 43 different categories that acupuncture can help with. And this is all wow. based on, you know, actual research, things that studies you can find on PubMed. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is cardiovascular issues. That's neurological issues. That's digestive issues. That's gynecology, obstetrics, 
uh, that is pain, uh, that is psycho-emotional things like depression and anxiety, right? So people come to us for a really wide variety of issues. You know, when I started out, it was mostly pain because they thought, oh, acupuncture for pain. Now my clinic, uh, we don't even advertise this. We're about 25% fertility. Uh, we see a lot of psycho-emotional stuff. Uh, we're, we're hitting March now. I'm starting to smell flowers. I know we're going to get a big bump of, uh, seasonal allergies. Right. Uh, and then we have some people that, you know, knock on wood. I've been in Baltimore practicing for 19 years. Now I have people that have been with me for over 15 years that just, you know, Hey, look, it's been a couple of weeks. I'm going to go see Tom. I don't feel as good as I could. So it, the, the variety of patients in the last 23 years that I've been practicing has really changed. And, and, I think we're seeing this shift where people, and, and I think COVID did some of this, people understand that I need to be healthy, you know, yeah. and I, and this is, this is an investment that I need to make to stay up and running so I can go out there and do those things right? that I want to do. So being more proactive with their health then. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what does it hurt? And uh, I, so <laughs> it, it it should not right and and it's not that every needle is going to be absolutely painless we are putting a needle through the skin uh but when we talk about needles we're, we're talking about a very different design of the needle they're they're designed to kind of push through the skin without cutting mm -hmm. and a syringe cuts in uh we're not injecting anything we're talking about something that is like 0.18 millimeters wide is is the average needle that we use in our clinic and that's like a strand and a half of hair yeah. yeah what you know, does so it do? What is it doing when <laughs> it goes in? I just, I just had this conversation with an MD, right? So, so the idea is, uh, and the Japanese affectionately call it an artificial splinter, right? Anytime we get a cut, a scrape, a splinter, our body is signaled that like, Hey, something came through the border. This isn't supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it sends fresh blood to that area. Right. And in that blood, we've got uh, we're flushing the tissue out. So any inflammation that's in that area is going to get swept out because all the blood vessels open up to get fresh blood there uh, Two, it's got oxygen, nutrients, white blood cells. So anything that's going on in that tissue where that needle is or around that needle is getting bathed in fresh blood. So it gives the potential to heal. Now, the interesting thing is when we put a needle like in the arm for something in the neck or something like that, right? That's that's kind of uh, how we work. Yeah, the needle may be down here. Now, the blood has to get from the core of the body down there. So all the blood vessels at the trunk of the body open up. So now the whole channel, the whole pathway starts to get fresh blood, better circulation, better nerve impulse, and allows the body to regulate that tissue. Oh. Do people feel relief instantly or uh, it, it, it's a mixed bag, right? You, you know, acupuncture is a therapy. Uh, it's going to depend on how long somebody's had the condition, how severe the condition is and, and kind of their overall health too, right? Mm -hmm. If they're very healthy in general, their outcomes are going to be better regardless of what they're getting done, whether it's, mm -hmm. you know, acupuncture or surgery. Right. Uh, if, if they're further away from health, it doesn't mean we can't help them. It just tends to take longer. Um, you know, some people will get off the table and feel noticeably different. Uh, some people, you know, it's a course of treatments before they start seeing something. And, you know, 23 years out, hopefully I keep saying how, how many years I've been practicing. Maybe I'm tired. <laughs> You're uh, proud of that. You're but, proud but, of that. Uh, but with, within that, um, it, you try and give people the, the, the most honest, uh, you know, Hey, look let's try it this many times and see what happens. And here's the cadence, here's the treatment plan. Uh, but even with a treatment plan, you want that to be living and breathing, right? If you come in and that first treatment just rocks your world and everything's great. Okay. Let's, let's alter that plan. Why? Cause you feel good. And I'd rather have you out feeling good than sitting on my table. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, and, and that's really, that's really a, a living conversation that we try to keep up with all our patients to come through the door and you letting said them before. know. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you yeah, yeah I, I'm going to forget what you said, though. <laughs> uh, but within that, you know, it, it it's it, treatment plans should be living things that like are a conversation. What what are your needs and wants and are we meeting them and how can we adjust to do that? And and you said that some insurances are now paying for acupuncture, uh, you know, so in Maryland, I will say, you know, and, and that's where I can speak from. Right. Uh, I, about 70% of policies have acupuncture. Now. That's wonderful. I, it would be great if insurance could just start covering 
all the functional medicine and holistic it's, things. It's very funny because like we think uh, when the insurance company is covering them that they're somehow progressive or they're ahead of the curve or they really care about the patient. And it's a financial decision. Uh, if if your insurance company pays me $100 a treatment, you could come every week for the year for $5,200. An MRI could easily be five to $6,000. Right. It's cheaper for them to pay for me than it is for them to pay for you to go get the MRI. Right Now, sometimes you end up getting the MRI anyway, or sometimes you get the MRI first, yeah. and then you come to me. But the cost effectiveness is really what the insurance is keying in on. And, and they know it. It's the course of seeing a pain specialist and then cortisone shots and this and that, you know, one or two visits could equal 10 visits to the acupuncturist. Yeah. So if I can get it done in three or four visits and you feel great and you're not taking up appointments and, mm -hmm. and you know, bills aren't showing up at the insurance company, they're happy too. Uh, so that's really where that drive has come from. And even, even to the point where, and we're, we're still having, there's some weird loopholes with this. Uh, Medicare now covers acupuncture for chronic low back pain. So anybody over 65 technically should be able to get acupuncture by a licensed acupuncturist, uh, but they do not allow licensed acupuncturists to participate with Medicare yet. It's it's kind of a horse before the cart or cart before the horse kind of situation. Right. So uh, many of us, uh, myself included, are are bringing on medical directors to oversee us in this capacity so we can provide uh, acupuncture for Medicare. It is slow moving. Uh, it's something I'm still learning uh, about. I've yeah. been in touch with a doctor for months and months and we just want to make sure we get it right. And we're not upsetting patients or we're not uh, going to end up sticking somebody else with the bill, but we're, we're really trying to get there because we want to have as many people have access to this as possible. Oh yeah. That's what it should be. That's what it should be about. I mean, in a perfect world, but does it work for wrinkles? Acupuncture? Um, so I have colleagues, I actually have a, a colleague that I see a post every other day. She teaches a uh, facial rejuvenation acupuncture. It does work. It's not something my clinic does. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we really wanted to, uh, see uh i don't want to say this the wrong way we wanted to see really complicated stuff i mean that's that's really what we like to do and yeah and, and the whole center was built around chronic illness and uh sports performance and uh, both of those uh demographics little changes in their improvement make big differences to them wow uh, and uh for us cosmetic acupuncture yes it does work it, it increases circulation to the area uh, and when you get more circulation to the face, you get more collagen right, uh, yeah. and you get more collagen and the wrinkles go away. And uh, if somebody's looking for a facelift, it's not going to be that. I don't think there's any acupuncturist that's claiming it will. But if you want to look like a younger version of you, it does take time and no insurance won't cover that. And yes, it yeah. does cost more because the treatments tend to be a, a lot more complicated mm -hmm. and it does take a lot more needles. Uh, uh, but it does work and people, uh, you know, after maybe about 12 to 20 treatments, like I said, it's not something I do. So I'm, I'm giving you a ballpark there. Uh, you do have some pretty lasting results. It may last, uh, you know, uh, six months to a couple of years, depending on your lifestyle. You know, if you're going out and taking down a pack of cigarettes a day, probably not that long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, you have people that like come in and, and, you know, they don't realize that their behaviors outside, regardless of, you know, whether they're, in with their GP or they're on my table or they're at the chiropractor, they don't realize that the stuff they do outside of that office is more important than the stuff that's getting done in that room. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. That is the way it is though. People are just that way. <laughs> like this Yeah. Is well, you know, can I, can I take just... a pill? Can you cut yeah. something out of me? Right. Can you give me something for this? And, and it goes away. Uh, and in most cases it, it takes a while for a condition to develop, develop even, even, uh, some of the more advanced stuff, it's, it just doesn't turn up overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes that's the same way that it goes away. It takes a while. It takes, right. you, you know, some like keep going at it and working on it um, for people to see the results that they want. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about, I know you did a book too on this, but oh, cupping, sure. what is, what is cupping? Who needs it? Why are you uh, doing it? Well, I wrote a book. So everybody, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, with, with that. So Cupping therapy is, it's often associated with East Asian medicine and, and it's been with East Asian medicine for a long time, 
but uh, you know this is kind of like a whereabouts unknown thing uh we know that it was mentioned in ancient egypt we know that hippocrates wrote about it we know that it was used in persia and this is thousands of years ago even longer than wow. acupuncture and uh we know that even the oldest text doesn't mean that's how old it is that's just when somebody right. decided to write about it right yeah you know so it's it could conceivably be over five thousand six thousand years old mm. um what it is is creating a vacuum using a cup or uh you know a jar uh you know classical times they would use buffalo water buffalo horns or bamboo or clay jars now we uh, you know in my clinic we use fire cupping and it's glass jars uh, and uh, the reason I wrote the book is there's so many methods now that are like over the counter in Asian markets. There's silicone cups, pumps, there's things that twist to create the suction. And all of them are, are relatively safe, easy to use. And, and once you remove the fire from the equation, I'm not worried about you burning your house down. So we might as well teach you how to use it. Uh, yeah, it looks as- painful. It, 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 it looks so much worse than it feels. Uh, yeah. the, the marks, the red circles, the bruises that everyone sees. Uh, 2016, Michael Phelps uh, showed up with those at the Olympics. And, uh, it, you know, the next day, our local news was in our office filming about cupping. And it was funny because I watched the previous Summer Olympics and all the Asian swimmers had cupping marks all over them. And I know on the floor, there was a discussion to what are they doing? And sure enough, uh, same thing happens with racehorses. Uh, oh, <laughs> you know, one funny. horse wins after getting something from a vet. Now all the horses get that the next yeah. race, uh, <laughs> um, whether or not they need it. Right. Uh, but with this, uh, I'm sure everybody saw the the Asian swimmers doing it and then said, what is that? And by, you know, four years later, Michael Phelps has the marks all over him and, you know, he's swearing by it. Yeah. And uh, then it kind of took off. Uh, and we've we've been seeing more and more, even the, uh, you know, uh, God, he, Usher was at the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. right? And they did a promo video or they did a video talking about how he's in his 40s now and he's, you know, how hard it was to train for this. And there's a scene of him getting fire cupping in, in, the, in, in this little trailer. There's just one little scene. And I go, oh, my God, look at that. What's you know, it's it doing so now? commonplace now. So what's it doing is like right that mark itself. When we see that, so we have this vacuum from the cup, mm-hmm. pulling the skin up, the skin gets pulled away from the fascia, the connective tissue in the middle, and then the fascia gets pulled away from the muscle. Normally we're doing this in tight areas or painful areas that we want to create some space. And in that space, uh, the blood from the deeper down in the tissue comes to the surface, right? It comes into that interstitial space now between the tissues Mm -hmm. and it allows for fresh blood to come in between it once again that fresh blood has oxygen nutrients all the thing your body needs to actually heal that tissue now the side effect of this is the small capillaries at the surface of the skin break why okay it's it's a hickey at that pressure yeah Yeah. and and (laughs) and yeah i I mean that's what it is it's just a perfectly circular hickey but (laughs) the hickey has a more localized surface effect where this cup can affect tissue even six inches down into the body. Now with that, you know, you get this initial flushing of the tissue inflammation out, fresh blood in, uh, that'll soften up muscles, achy joints can help with chest congestion, can help with some digestive issues. Um, and I'm just giving you the major ones. Yeah. Um, with that, after the cups come off, now your body has to deal with all this blood. That's not in a vessel. So you get increased circulation, cleaning that up after the treatment oh, the next wow. week or so, as oh, long as there's that, that bruise okay. there. Yeah. So some people, depending on their circulatory system and everything, I've seen people have some leftover bruising, you know, it's yellow, green, yeah. orange, something weird looking <laughs> uh, two to three weeks out. And that's, that is normal for some people. Do they use and, it for cellulite? Cellulite? Um, I, I, I hate that. Uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Uh, and, and in researching the book and looking on, you know, every medical site and looking for uses and things like that, cause that's something that people ask a lot about. I can find no reference to that. And okay. certainly it, if I put a cup on your skin and it sucks the skin up and it puts fluid there, blood, you know, whatever it is, the skin is going to look smoother. 
but that's mm-hmm. going to go away. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, we have whole body cryotherapy at our office. And I remember when, when we first got it, we were seeing what other people were promoting, right? And they were promoting the weight loss function of it. And there is some evidence, but it's like, you got to be in my clinic every day. Yeah, you know, and and it's not feasible for a lot of people. But right. what they were doing was they were taking a tape measure, running it around somebody's waist before they got in the cryo. They do the cryo, they get super cold, they come out, and they do the tape measure, and they'd be down an inch or two. Oh my god! Right? It's amazing. <laughs> I'll just yeah, stay in there <laughs> because because cold constricts everything. Right. You just made the fat more dense. You didn't get rid of it, right. you, you know, and then and then like I did it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that looks cool. And then 10 minutes later, I'm warm again. I put it back on. <laughs> now we're back to where we were, <laughs> yeah, you know, and 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 when we're doing these things, when we're doing traditional medicine or we're doing something outside of the norm, you, you never want to over promise and under deliver. You never want to be the snake oil salesman. You never want to tell right. somebody something wrong. And it's unethical to do that. So when I saw these posts, I got really pissed off. And then I realized that like, yes, my cryotherapy unit is a grade three medical device in Europe, but it's considered spa here. So there's no regulatory. Uh, oh, wow. Issue with it. So you can say whatever the hell you want. Right. And normally it's not a healthcare practice doing it. It is in a gym or it's in a spa or it's, and I'm not taking anything away from no, gyms or no. spas. So with no regulation, that's, you, you know, you kind of get a little like iffy and, you know, I, I had somebody that came from another one and showed me something. And I said, well, that shouldn't have happened. Where was your mask? Right. It was a whole closed one. They said, Oh, they said we didn't need masks. Oh God. And I said, no, but your head's in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> And I, I said that, that is, that is the standard. When I was looking at units, the reason I chose this one was because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. I didn't get that one because of this, you know? Uh, so it, it's very interesting that like, you know, somebody with a, a good chunk of change can go and buy a machine and do this. And I'm not against that because I think people should have the right to do what they want to, to their own mm-hmm. body. But I do think there should be some safety protocols in place. And it doesn't feel like that with certain things, especially when we get into these, these newer technologies or, or well, cryotherapy has been around, uh, it's a year younger than me. So it's 40, 46 what years old. <laughs> what, it, what is that for? So, you know, our clinic, you know, is based off of what acupuncture does from a Western standpoint. Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest things is to reduce inflammation. We got plenty of studies to show that cryotherapy is this initial ridiculously cold shock. I mean, the warmest temperature we would run patients through is negative 184 Fahrenheit. So this really fast cold hits you uh, from the outside in, squeezes the skin, squeezes the fascia, squeezes the joints, pushes all that blood and inflammation back to the core of the body. When you get out, your body wants to warm itself up, opens up all those blood vessels. So we've essentially pumped all the old stagnant blood out from the extremities back to the core where it gets processed. And then we have fresh blood pumping back out there to get you warm again. So uh, there's an endorphin rush because uh, your brain kind of thinks you're you're dying, <laughs> freezing to death. So it wants to make Lovely. it. We don't tell people that while they're going in. That's <laughs> afterwards. Oh yeah, that's your brain. When they're like, oh my God, I feel amazing. I feel like I can go for a run. And you're like, yeah, that's the endorphins. What are those from? Oh, your brain thought you were going to freeze to death. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you know, but like after a while, if you do it enough, uh, it, it's sad because I I really enjoyed that feeling. Right. It's it's a like rush. A high. Yeah. And uh, after a while, you get immune. To it. <laughs> like I go in there and I'm like, I'm not even shivering anymore, guys. Oh, this wow. <laughs> Is that like, what the but, cold plunge thing that people do? Oh, Is so we have thin- a cold plunge, too. OK, similar uh, idea. Plunge, Same idea, cold or or similar idea, cold plunge. uh, You know, it's funny because water that's under 60 degrees, which is like, you know, 60 degrees isn't a bad spring day. Right, right. When it's wet, it's horrible. Uh, The the whole body cryotherapy can get that ridiculously cold because it's dry, you know, and often, you know, we're in Maryland in the summer, it could be 98 and 100 percent humidity. It's it's miserable. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, but if I go to Arizona, 98, hey, it's warm, but it's it's gorgeous. Right. You know, and it's that dry versus wet. So when you're wet and 60 degrees or 50 degrees, I think we keep our machine around 40 degrees. Uh, that cold plunge pulls heat out of your core. So the cold is different in the cold plunge. So you might be at our max setting in the cryo. And we had people going, look, I've been doing the max setting just like me. And I'm, uh, you know, they're not getting the rush. They're not getting the hit. And it's like, all right, how about you jump in that tub? 
And I was like, but that's so much warmer. And I'm like, it's so much worse. It is so much worse. And with that, uh, people, you know, a lot of the research is saying about 11 minutes total for a week in a cold plunge. Uh, and uh, we have people coming in and some of them do like a 10 minute stint. And that's really like a long time to be in there. Uh, some people do just a couple of minutes and and they feel pretty good afterwards. But that's that that rapid constriction again, getting uh, inflammation out. Uh, you don't want to be in there too long. So the idea that like you would see catchers after a baseball game taping ice around their knees and leaving the packs there for hours, mm -hmm. that shuts down healing. We don't right. want to do it for that long. Right. But for a few minutes, you know, to get a whole system kind of reboot, you definitely can. Is it for everybody? No. If you don't like cold, don't don't do it. Right, <laughs> like, yeah. I this is there, there's this kind of machismo thing uh in in you know, they'll use the term biohacking or something like that, or human optimization. And I was really into it. And then I was like, wait a minute, I'm not, I'm, I never want to be one of those alpha males. I don't, there's no point in it. it right. It's it's not healthy. It's toxic masculinity. And it's just look at how tough I am or look at right. what I do to be better than everybody else. And I'm yeah. like, I got little old ladies going in the tub. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why you think you're so tough. <laughs> Grandma over here is not even shivering. You, you know, it's like, this isn't a, this isn't a marker. I mean, how about you guys try childbirth and then you can talk to women. You know, so, so for me, it was just this, like, you know, like, look, this is a, a modality that is accessible to everyone. If it fits for you, right. Don't, don't jam a square peg into a round hole just because you heard that the round hole is good. Yeah, you know, right, right. Uh, now I'm starting to sound like a euphemism, and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know what works for you, what makes sense for you, what is appropriate for your conditions. Use those things, and if it, you know, our our clinic serves partially as a lab, hopefully. So as I learn more, as our staff learns more, we bring in other stuff. Why? Because we want to be of value, and and just as your health is a constantly evolving thing. Healthcare, you know, acupuncture has been a living, breathing system for over 3000 years. Right. And it's still evolving. We're still learning. So I love that. why not keep that going throughout all of healthcare? Right. We know that like what we're doing now, they weren't doing 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, and with AI and all this advanced technology, hell in three months, we'll be doing something different. Yeah. And that's I wanted be to ask about that. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. AI. Um, well, first I want to know what red light therapy is and then uh, I'm going to talk about AI. So what is red light? So red light, red light therapy. Uh, it, let's, let's sound super technical. It comes from a category of medicine called, uh, uh photobiomodulation, which means light to affect the, the, a living being, right? So red light therapy and our red light unit has red and near infrared, which is just outside the visible spectrum. Uh, lights in it and red light is the same. This is mimics the early morning sunlight, the, the sunset light uh, okay. at, a, at a much higher intensity. And what happens is this light stimulates all the cells in your body. If you remember seventh grade bio, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So this stimulates those mitochondria to make more cellular energy. Hmm. It's also been shown to reduce uh, inflammation, help, uh, with metabolic respirate or a cellular respiration, getting things in and out of the cells that need to get in and out. Uh, you know, a lot of people use it cosmetically as well. It's, it, it's also good for, you know, wrinkles, right, skin discoloration and these things. Mm -hmm. And I have some colleagues that do do facial rejuvenation. They, they add just one that kind of sits over the head. Mm -hmm. Ours is a whole body one. So it's good for workout recovery, joint pain, uh, just cellular energy. We've had some people using it because uh, the near infrared, the one you can't see, penetrates a little bit deeper into the body. We've actually had some people using it for upset, not upset stomachs, but digestive issues where they're getting cramping in the gut, you know, just to give the gut more actual energy to, to be able to do what it does. How does that work if somebody works out all the time? They would come in and just get it once a week or? I, you know, we, you, you know, and, and we talked about this insurance being a limiting factor for somebody. Right. We have a whole bunch of different things we do at our office. We have uh, three different membership tiers. So oh, it, it, okay. it allows people to use them more frequently. And, it, you know, not that we're trying to be a gym, but the idea is your healthcare is a dynamic thing, right? You go get the blood test once a month. They take your weight. They take your blood pressure. If everything is a check, they hey, we'll see you later. 
but that's not how we feel on the inside, right? You don't right. go rushing to the doctor if you're like, oh, my knee's a little crank, you know, crickety today. So what we want to do is create an atmosphere where people feel like one, there's a community and two, that there's like, there's somebody there checking in on you and saying yeah. like, how are you feeling? Right. So our staff does an amazing job of this. I, I mean, I could, I I'll sing their praises every day. They're just amazing people. And they all found my clinic. Uh, fortunately they got what we were trying to do, you know, and that is really have an impact on people's lives. And you don't, you don't get to do that in one, you know, eight minute session, uh, right. you know, every six months. So our membership gets people coming in weekly at, at the very least. We do have an unlimited membership uh, and and really kind of experiencing and enjoying the services so so they can have the positive effect on their lives, right? Uh, you know, and, and they have some control over that. Hey, today I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. And we're there to guide them. You know, hey, I just noticed this thing came up. What do you recommend? Um, and it, it it's really... I'm, I'm hoping, you know, because it sounds too arrogant if I say, yes, this is what's happening. Um, <laughs> but I'm hoping we're empowering people to to have some more control over their health and get that it's not that snapshot at your doctor's office, right? If you're not sleeping and you have a bad night's sleep, how much does that mess you up the next day? And that's just one little night, right? Right, right. You know, in the grand scheme of things. So if we can make you sleep a little bit better, and we can keep that regulated or, you know what, look, I, I got a stressful week coming up. I know if I come in and I do something beforehand, I've, I've premedicated myself, you know, I, I've, I've made myself more resilient to go through that. And then another thing we do is, is health stacks, right? And stacking is a word that you hear a lot in gyms where it's like, what's in your stack? It's, you know, oh, it's creatine. It's this much whey powder. It's this, okay. it's this many supplements. It's what are you taking? A lot of times it's testosterone too, but no one likes to talk about that part. <laughs> but but shh, we've rebranded, you know, anabolic steroids as TRT and I'm not anti-TRT. I'm very pro TRT. Uh, but like, you know, we don't want roid rage, you know, it's just a normal amount yes. to keep us healthy. But within <laughs> that, um, you know, the idea is that like a stack can be anything we're doing for health. So if you come in and you say, look, springtime, my allergies are shot. What do you got for me? Oh, here's this stack. You come in, you're here for about two hours. We're going to do some acupuncture. We're going to do some salt. We're going to do, you know, and, and you have a, a selection, a preset pack of things that you can do in our office for a discounted price, cheaper than every, every single one. Um, hopefully to get you that synergistic effect, to, to get you healthier quicker, right? And then, oh, maybe I'm doing that every couple of weeks during allergy season. Yeah. Or, hey, you know, I'm in pain. I need something to get me through. Okay, here's what we got for you. Boom, 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 boom. Yes, in and out of the office. And you've gotten like five services that are all aimed at what your complaint is. I so love we're, that. We're, yeah, we're really trying to be savvy about that. We're constantly tinkering with you know our toys to say this plays really well with this and yeah. even the order we spent a lot of time going through like does this matter is it better if we do this first or this second and do we have any evidence one is there any studies that would point to this no okay well what makes sense for the patient flow what makes sense for the clinic flow what makes sense for the next service they're getting mm -hmm. you know oh this isn't going to feel so good after that so maybe we'll swap the order I think that's amazing though, because it's like, you're creating your own thing where it's a doctor's office, a spa, a gym, like all merged together. And then it makes people feel like you said, empowered, like they're not mm -hmm. just coming in like you do to a doctor's office where it's like, help me. I'm helpless. I don't know what I'm doing. I have no control over my health. And then you're saying, no, you've got control. You can, this is what's you, you can do today. And this is going to make yeah, you feel and, really and good. The idea is to have, and and really, when even the word doctor, it comes from the Latin root docere, which means to teach, right? It's not, it it it's not this like you're not a mechanic, you're not you're so like, look, I'm gonna tell you about your health, and and hopefully we can help you with that, and I, I think, uh, it, you know, 
it, it took a while because like you said, it's like, well, what are you? We get called the spa a lot. And like, I, I bite my lip. I'm like, I got a fucking doctor. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know how many healthcare boards I've been on? Do you know, do you know how hard I work for right. you to call this? Yeah. You know, and it's not that there's anything wrong with a spa because even that water, that term has been watered down. Right. In, in Europe, a spa was the place you, you went to go get healthy. Like you don't yeah. feel good. We're going to remove you. We're going to send you to the Alps and you're going to get these therapies and you're going to come back when you feel better. Right. right. And now it's like, what did you do? I got the mud wrap and then, then I got a massage and then I ate a salad and then I went home, you know? And it's like, not that like, that sounds like an amazing afternoon. For yeah, me. I'm not going to lie, right, but, right. but like they've, they've taken the, the health aspect out of it and we just call it self-care. And what does that mean? Well, that's nebulous. Well, Getting eight hours of sleep is self-care. Right. Not eating McDonald's is self-care. You, you know, so there's so many. And, and look, I'm not going to knock McDonald's either because every once in a while I drive past a place and the fries smell really good. Yeah, uh, they do have good French fries. It is it is scary. Uh, I don't, don't think they're actual potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> but within that, you know, it's it's it is it, health care is a dynamic thing that impacts every aspect of your life. So what we're, we're trying to do is is show as much of that as possible right a lot of the services we do i mentioned the red light is the same as the morning light and the afternoon light well if you were outside more not only that you'd be getting cold in the winter and hot in the summer you'd, you'd knock out my uh sauna and my cryotherapy right right if we were a little bit more human uh in 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 our relationship to nature uh a lot of the things we do become obsolete which uh I guess it's good for me that we're all grinding and we're all in the rat race, but you know, truly, I mean, we should all just go live in the woods a little bit, uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, you know, maybe turn off the AC and drive with the windows open in the summer. I don't right. want to do that. Well, I'm you're not giving, doing that. <laughs> you're giving people options though, which is great. If they can't be outside, you're giving them an alternative. So that's wonderful. Um, so where do you think AI is going to take things? Are you I'm, I'm so excited for it. You know, I, I, I mentioned to you, I think offline, me and my, my friend do a, a podcast called the Reverend health. And uh, for some reason, we always end up at least mentioning psychedelics and AI. Uh, he, he is in tech, you know, he does, he does web marketing and, and all these yeah. kind of crazy things and AI is just, just so cool right now. And I'm about to, like, I hate taking notes and there's, there's an AI that takes notes for you well, and, and you just great. kind of put it in the room with you and, and it's HIPAA compliant. So you're not getting like the, the patient's information isn't going anywhere except into their chart. And all I have to do is talk. I'm going to be talking anyway. Might as well take the notes for me. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's really, that's really cool and exciting for me because that, that takes one of my, my pet peeves off my list. Right. And, uh, you, you know, I also think I've seen so many articles about acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine getting affected by AI, because this is, there's a nuance to it, right. Where it's like, it's not always a hard and fast fact. And that is hard for, for a human mind to comprehend. And it takes a lot of training to get it right, do it well. Um, AI can exist in this like multi-dimensional state. Well, if this, then that, and they can do that a billion times. Right. So it can handle these massive amounts of subtle data and assimilate it into something. I'm really excited to see it. Now, if it puts me out of work, I just hope it puts everybody else out of work and we all got to figure something else out. I mean, I'm cool. To go hang out in the woods. I mean, we there you go. Have a good time. But uh, I, like, you know, I, I, I do like Netflix, Netflix. So I, I mean, like, you know, like but, you know, if the technology married with uh, like a, a less busy life would be, I, I think, amazing. And I'm hoping. Uh, whoever the overlords are who who capitalize on the AI or benevolent uh, and let us yeah. do that. Uh, but I do think there there is this this radical technology where we're seeing it making new psychedelics and making new drugs and improving surgical outcomes. And it, it, it's going to revolutionize every aspect of life. And on one hand, that's scary because it, 
you know, if you if you if you say it the right way, it sounds like we're, we're headed towards a Terminator scenario. Right. And right. on the other, you know, if you say it another way, it sounds like we're headed towards Utopia, where like all of those, you know, futuristic shows where it's like, oh, flying cars. And what right. do we do for work? No, we just go to museums and hang out. And it's like, <laughs> that sounds amazing. We should be doing that. There's no war. Nobody gets sick. That's great. Yeah. Well, anything like you said to even note taking just small little things that, um, are stressful, you know, cause they, yeah. they weigh on you and it's like, Oh, I've got to do this. I don't want to do this. If there's stuff that AI can just jump in and do, and, and, do. and it takes yeah. stress off. Stress is a huge component, um, for people with what's going on with their bodies, you know, that Absolutely. fight or flight and all that stuff. So I'm sure it would help with that. But so tell people how they can find you. I, uh, so, uh, my book, uh, you can find at the cupping book.com. Uh, it's also available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, anywhere people sell books. Um, and then my clinic site is charm city, integrate TIV, T I V E.com. Uh, there you can find out about all the crazy services we offer, uh, about me. Uh, I'd love to do more speaking and, and events. So hit me up if you're interested. I, uh, and, uh, yeah, everything that's going on, uh, related into our field is, is on that website. Yeah. I love that. I, um, I really didn't know about a lot of that stuff. So hopefully that informed a lot of people that also are kind of in the dark have heard the terms, but you know, I'd rather ask a, a source, a credible <laughs> yeah, yeah. source than just read about it on Wikipedia or whatever, just hear about it from a friend that maybe doesn't really explain that well. Um, but so do you think like, are there other clinics that are like yours for people that can't go to Maryland or are there a Absol lot of people? Absolutely. I, you know, the services that I picked are, are a little unique, but you see a lot of versions popping up. Um, and I, I even saw a chain that like, I, I don't, I'm not going to bad mouth the chain, but mm -hmm. like it's, it's not practitioner driven uh, okay. and, and it's like, they have some stuff, but from what I've heard from people that have gone there, it's kind of like, you're on your own. Oh, that's scary. You, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. like, or what are you, Oh, you're here for this. Okay, great. Do that. Um, and, and really what we're trying to do, even if the technology gets to the point where you're going to buy one for your house, I yeah. don't care. I just want to make sure you have a good experience <laughs> and, and that you're, you're feeling the best you can. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll modify and shift. I, I already know it's coming. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Tom, for taking the time to talk to me and to educate me because I really felt kind of clueless, but you've definitely helped me figure out what some of that stuff is. I think acupuncture sounds pretty cool. So I'm gonna have to check into that. All right, definitely, Don. All right, thank you so much. And we'll be in touch. All right, thank you. All right, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.